Hi everyone, this is Doug George. Um, welcome to the next of my series of videos for the Continuum Frame. Very specifically in this set of videos, we'll be installing the Quilters Creative Touch hardware and software onto the frame that was purchased last year. Um, I make these videos, this video is going to be the same as the last one I did when I installed the frame. Um, basically, I am going to follow the instructions step by step as I'm doing it. So you're going to see everything I'm doing while I'm doing it and any hiccups I have along the way, you're going to witness those. To that end, I'm recording this kind of preamble toward the actual installation. I actually began the installation about a week ago. And again, I was following the steps and the instructions that came with the Quilters Creative Touch software. And I was perfectly fine until I got to what is listed in the instructions as step four, belt clamp to frame end. Um, my confusion came, I don't know if you can tell or not, but if you look at all the pictures, let me see if I can get a little closer here. If you look at the pictures, you'll see it bolting uh, belt tensioners and belt brackets onto the end of the frame. And it actually shows holes in the frame that these are supposed to be bolted to. And in fact, these were the pieces. Uh, I got my, my belt clamp for one end and I have the belt tensioner for the other end. And I was supposed to mount these bolts to the frame. Unfortunately, when I looked at the actual frame, there weren't any holes in the frame for this to mount to. And so right away I was dead in the water. So if you are working with a continuum frame and you find that you're in the same situation, I would suggest you get hold of the Grace Company right away. In fact, what my wife suggested I would I do when I did this last week when I was installing this, she had me get onto the Quilters Creative Touch Facebook page. And she's, she's got me signed up as a, as a member so I could ask questions. I posed this very question to that, um, to that chat and immediately Marie from the Grace Company chimed in and said, uh, if you're doing this on a continuum frame, you need to have the clamps that go with it. Let me send those to you. And she was right on top of it. I, I, I see all kinds of comments on that chat about uh, how good the customer service is with the Grace Company. And I got to experience it firsthand. So all that to say, what came in the mail today, it's been about a week, I received essentially these clamps. Um, they've got the tensioners on them. They got the two little things at either end, but they're bolted to the clamps that are effectively I'm going to mount on the ends of the continuum frame. And the purpose of these clamps is essentially there is a belt that runs the length of the frame that is gonna drive the machine from left to right uh, once we get the software installed and everything set up. So all this to say, before you start doing the install, if you have a continuum frame, you don't see these big clamps that kind of beige and it's got the actual belt holders on the end. And the other one has got the great big tensioner with the two knobs on it on the end that's actually going to tighten the belt once we get it installed. If you don't have those in your in, in, in what you have right now, and you don't see any screw holes near the front of the end legs of the frame for which you can screw the clamps into, then I would suggest reach out to Grace Company fairly quickly and ask them to provide you with uh, with the missing pieces. They provided the, them to us free of charge, so there's no issue there. Um, and I'll save you agony, as, as not so much agony, but frustration when I got part right through the instructions and realized they had to stop. Step one appears to be taking this motor plate that you see here and installing it on the frame. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. There's several pieces that are involved. There's the actual motor plate itself. There is the actual carriage I'm going to mount it on. Um, I need to have five... Uh, um, hex screws, that's what I have here, these five screws, five nuts, five carriage clamps, that's these little black things here, and these things are pretty much, uh, they came in a little separate packet when they came in, so you have to kind of hunt for them, but they are there, and they're black, so you can't miss them. Um, the instructions also say you need an Allen wrench, and for some reason it says uh, you need a 10 millimeter wrench, not included, but as I dig through the bag, what I have here is the Allen wrench, uh, the, the millimeter wrench, it, it does come with it. So ignore the instruction that says you have to get your own. It is there. Um, also, this is the Allen wrench that came with it. Um, Grace Company is really, really good about giving you the tools that you need to do the job. Uh, I, for one, was very pleased with the tools that came with the original frame. So this is the actual Allen wrench that came with the frame. I'm going to start with this first to see how well it works. If it doesn't work very well, we'll switch back to the one that came with it. So that being said, let me set my camera up here. So I got a little stand I'm going to put it on. And hopefully I got this positioned in a way we can see what I'm doing. Essentially, I need to take this motor plate. And it's got a little bit of weight to it. It's, um, I would say, probably at least 10 pounds. And I'm going to mount it into the, the, the bottom carriage on the frame. Now, 
the picture shows it kind of tilting it in. So you'll see there's, there's actually screw holes in the tray on both sides, and there's little, little indentations in the actual motor plate itself. Um, it looks like all the goodies on this thing actually need to be face, face, uh, as I look at the, need to be face down. So you'll see one side's got all the bells and whistles and gears and wires, and then the underside is just kind of plain. So what it looks like is that I have to have the plain side on the top and the fancy side on the bottom with all the stuff. So I'm going to kind of line everything up on the tray here. And I've also got the power cord. There's a, the actual power cord on this thing. You see it's kind of hanging off the back. I've got the power cord pointed toward the back of the machine. Um, the instructions really don't give a distinction about front or back when it comes to the carriage frame. But I've got the encoder obviously installed on the back. You'll see I've got the actual stop. And you can't tell from the video, but there's a, there's a wire hanging out for the rear for the uh, encoder. That can sit at the back of the machine, and I assume the power cord's got to go to the back as well. So that's how I'm going to position it when I lay this down. And so the picture in the book says line everything up, and then just tilt it downward so that all the holes line up. And so, actually, that went pretty smoothly. It's just laying in place there. Okay, so I've got that laying in place. I now need to take my, I'm going to take one of my uh, screws, one of my nuts, and one of my uh, carriage clamps and mount them on the machine. And the picture in the manual shows, essentially, you've got the screw, you've got the actual, um, the, the uh, screw itself coming down from the top. So I'll just do this one here in the corner here for starters. And on the bottom side, it talks about putting in the clamp and the clamp kind of is oriented uh, uh, north to south this way. Kind of put that in place on the top side, underneath and then put the screw in place. And I've got my finger kind of holding it. And actually, the instructions do suggest it may be a little easier to actually tilt the frame up. So I'm gonna tilt the frame up and see what that does. It makes life a little simpler. We'll lift it up off the frame and tilt it up slightly here. Not mess anything up in the process. So I've got my screw in place. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I got the screw, I'm gonna put the clamp in, on top of it. Hang on, let me just set this down and move my hand a little bit. There we go. And put that in place. And I've got it turned around. Hang on a second here. Again, make sure that is lined up like that. Okay. One of the things this instruction says is don't tighten these. Uh, it's very particular. It says do not tighten the nuts all the way, partly because once we get the belts in place, we'll need to reposition the frame so that we the belts perfectly line up with the way it's supposed to go. Okay, so now I have got my motor plate installed. So that's step one. Uh, the next segment of this video will be step two. So back in a second. Doug again with step two of our assembly, installing the power strip. This appears to be a pretty simple install. Essentially what comes with this thing, as you'll see what I'm holding here, is a, almost looks like a relatively normal power strip, but it, essentially the thing also, uh, uh, it's got several outlets for the stuff we're going to plug in. And essentially, this thing is pretty simple. It's just going to mount in the very back of the carriage. So we're just going to take the steps and put these, install that portion of it. To do this, we need um, more screws. Now, I failed to point out this distinction in the last step. The screws that we used in the last step were 14 millimeter screws. I think of them as longer screws. Change that with what I'm about to install. There are two screws that are this size, if you can see that. They are, they are the only two screws that are this particular size are the 10 millimeter screws. They're the only ones that come with this thing. And these are the screws that are actually used to mount the power strip on the back. And so we're gonna pretty much do the same thing. We're gonna take the two screws, line them up, and there's two matching nuts to go with it. So we're just gonna mount these in the back. There's one. And here's the other. Now these, we do have to tighten. So again, we have the 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter wrench, which this step says we do have. I apparently realized I got it from the previous step. And the Allen wrench I like to use that came with the, with the frame. 
and just essentially use these tools and tighten the power strip down. Okay, that appears to be securely in place. We have got the power strip mounted. It also talks about plugging the motor plate into the power strip. Um, to me, it seems a little early in the process to do this, but if that's what it wants me to do, let's give it a try. So I'm just gonna stick this in the outlet. Okay, so I got the, I got the uh, motor board, the motor plate plugged into the power strip, and now we've completed step two, I believe. Let me flip the page here, make sure, yep. Next part of this video is gonna be step three. So back in a bit. So we'll follow this step by step. Now the short belt comes taped. So step 3.1 says, remove the tape. So live on the air here, I am going to remove the tape around the short belt. Hopefully this end, it comes right off. And the belt is, is off. Okay, short belt tape off the short belt removed. Step two, place one end, I'm sorry, also part, part of this is remove the tape from the belt clamp. So I've got just two belt clamps, they both look identical. I'm just gonna take the one here and pull the tape off of it as well. As I understand it, and like I said, I've been studying the pictures to make sure I'm, I'm describing this right, there is actually a front and a back to this. The front appears to be the piece that's actually smooth on the ends as opposed to the back which has a couple of, I don't know if you can tell, there's a couple of prongs. Uh, the manual lists that as the back. So we have the front and the back, and these are the two pieces that come together to form the actual belt clamp. So what it says to do is to, and bear with me a moment, I've got my pieces messed up here. Here we go, okay. And you know you have it right. I, I kind of messed them up when I was taking them apart. Um, there's like a, what I call the male end and the female end for the way these two pieces fit together. If you put them together correctly, they should be right tight smooth. So you can actually see exactly how this is gonna go. So it says, basically remove, the, remove them and then place one end of the short belt, this thing here, inside the clamps. Again, what's looking at the picture, it looks like the picture is showing it um, like this with the prongs pointing toward the right. So that's why I'm kind of holding it. I'm going to separate the two. I'm going to take the belt and you'll see there's like little ribs. There's ribs on the belt and ribs in the clamp. I'm going to put those both in place and seal them back together like this. Once I do that, it talks about taking the two 20 millimeter bolts, again, those are the long ones, and put them through the belt clamp assembly. And so you'll see there's a couple of places to feed these. Again, there's, there's kind of a six-sided hex end on it, and there's no place to put an Allen wrench, so you know you've got the right one. Slide it through, and it should just fit right into the groove so that it fits tight and it doesn't turn. I put one at one end and take the other 20 millimeter and put it on the other end. Now this is the part I think I've got right, and this is another component to this thing that I haven't mentioned yet. I've also got this great big monstrosity here. This is the belt clamp. This, this deal is actually gonna mount on the underside of the continuum, the Q14 itself. And this is gonna be the, 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 the structure that's actually going to move the machine back and forth. So I'm gonna take, and again, looking at the pictures again, it looks like when I'm mounting it, you'll see this kind of a little flange on the end of this here, there's like a little stick up end here and there's, it's relatively smooth there. I don't know if you can tell. I'm gonna put the flange end downward, so it's down. And when I put my clamps, my, my, uh, my uh, belt clamp on, I'm gonna have the two little prongs that stick out on the bottom on the underside against that flange. So I'm gonna put them both in place so that basically this is all tied kind of together and it's holding the uh, belt in place. And then I'm gonna take two of those little hex nuts that were there, of all the hex nuts that came with this and essentially put them on here. And it says, along with all the instructions, do not tighten anything. Uh, we'll need, we may need to use this later for when we uh, adjust, adjust the belt and we get the thing rolling. So I'm actually gonna put these on here. Bear with me a moment. Now what's interesting is that I don't have, I'm just make sure I'm doing this right. I don't have a lot, have a lot of space to work with. Um, if you can tell the way I've got this mounted, I've got the clamp in place and I've got my, my bolt through it and it's the shorter of the two, but it's the longer of the two bolts. So it actually has to go through both the belt and the clamp itself and all of that. And now I've got to attempt to screw this thing on. And to be honest, I'm not sure how you go about that without using uh, a wrench that I would possibly have my own 10 millimeter wrench. Let me just see if I can just hand tighten this and get it, get it started here. 
Okay, I'm back. I actually got them on just pretty much through trial and error. Just getting, if you can see, I've got the two nuts screwed on here. They are not tight, um, but they are in place so that the uh, that belt bracket on the end is in place. And you'll see that the belt kind of hangs down from the side and it's locked into the grooves into the bracket. So we've got the belt bracket on this deal. Now what we have to do is on the other end of this thing, install one of the tensioners. So forgive, forgive me while I get this lined up the way I want it here. The tensioner is this funky thing with the knobs on it. This is going to go on the other end of this, and by its basic name, what this is going to be used for is um, is basically tightening the belt as we need to, and we need to adjust it. So it's very similar to the bracket. It's got the two little things on the end here. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did at the other. The other, the other end also has a flange on it. I'm going to put the two little divots so that it comes in contact with the flange. And now we're using the shorter, the shorter nut, the bolts, the, the 10 millimeters, and it'll be the exact same thing. Uh, the bolt goes through the end and comes out. And again, let me uh, get this started. I may edit this out as well, see how long it takes me to put these on. Same deal. These go on, one end and the other here. I think my issue was I just had a, a bolt that wasn't happy with any nut that I tried. So to be perfectly honest, I did cheat. I dug out the socket wrench, 10 millimeter socket wrench, and kind of forced it and got it on. So essentially the end result of this step is I have got my belt clamp. At one end, I've got the belt tensioner. I've got, so I got the belt clamp and the belt attached. And at the other end, I've got the belt tensioner. Um, so we're ready to move on to the next step. And that step is actually mounting this to the machine. This is where the constructions are a little confusing. The manual says this is step three. However, if you look at the pictures next to the instructions, their pictures reference step 4.1, 4.2, stuff like that. So let's just call this step 3A for now. And the nature of this step is that we're going to mount this clamp to the machine itself. Um, so now what we're going to do in step 3A, mount this to the bottom of the machine. And you can tell the machine, by the way, we call it Esther. We've given it a name. And this is Esther laying on her side here. Esther, um, this, this, this clamp needs to be mounted to Esther on the right side of the machine. In other words, if you look at the instructions, if you were standing, if this was mounted on a frame and you were standing at the handlebars, this thing would be attached to the right hand side of the handlebars. That's going to be this right here. So what I'm going to do, um, take the, um, again, the instructions are kind of confusing on the bolts, So basically I'm using these, uh, these, uh, uh, six millimeter bolts, whatever they were that I used earlier, I'm gonna feed them through, mount it to the frame, attach it with the uh, Allen wrench. Again, nothing's gonna be tight again, so I'm just gonna screw that in place. There's the one end, there's the other end, and again, everything's on the right side of the machine, so everything, this is installed to the right side. And I'll take my Allen wrench and just loosely tighten for now. I'm not going to make it too snug yet. There we go. And now we've got the belt clamp attached to the bottom of the machine. So, uh, so we come back, I'll move on to the real step four, and we'll go from there. In a bit, and see you in a bit. Take this clamp, and it's got the same thing as we installed onto the sewing machine. It's got the two bolts that's already coming in it with the front and the back piece. Oops, I'm sorry. I grabbed the orange one. I should have grabbed the green one. Let's try the green one. There we go. We'll loosen, loosen these parts and actually take it off of the clamp. Oh, I took them off all the way. Now, this all kind of bolts together here. I've got the two, this is how it came assembled when it shipped to me. I've got the two bolts already assembled. I'm going to take the two bolts out just for demonstration purposes. Okay, I got the two bolts out, and I've got the same clamp assembly as I had for the short belt. That's got the, the front and the back with the two little prongs on it. I'm going to take my belt, my long belt, feed it through, and get, get, get everything to kind of hook in there. And it's got a, the male and the female, as we talked about earlier. I'm going to put those back in place. Put my two screws back in place. Now, these are a little different from what we did on the short belt. On the short belt, these were kind of hex-related, and there was a nut on the end. Uh, this doesn't appear to be the case. This is just going to screw directly into the clamp itself. So I've got my clamp. I've got the two holes in the clamp. I'm going to take my, my long belt with, and the clamp and everything installed. Line it all up. 
and tighten the screws down. Now, I guess I didn't really have to take the whole thing apart. I could have just as easily just loosened the bolts enough to actually separate them and feed the belt in place, but I wanted to kind of show you how the pieces fit together. So effectively, I've now got my, my long belt threaded in. And I'll tighten these, I just put them in just a little bit just to kind of get them snug. So that holds the belt in place. So I'm just gonna move my camera to the end of the machine here. Bear with me a moment. So I'm standing in the back of the machine right now. So that's actually the right is what you're looking at. But in reality, from the point of view of my wife using the machine, that's the left side. I'm gonna take this. There are, I've got the clamp I've just put together. I've got the two little screws. I'm gonna mount it near the front corner. It says the leg. I'm not really mounting it to the leg. I'm mounting it to the front. So I just kind of, there's a couple of uh, screws in there that kind of tighten down. I'm going to set it. I'm just going to set it here for now. I'm not actually, normally I would actually use a wrench to tighten these two down so the clamp is, clamp is firm to the frame. I don't want to do that just yet because I don't know exactly where this has to go. And by that I mean the following. I, forgive me while I move the camera again. This belt is going to run the whole length of the table. So now if I move the camera and I move it all the way down to effectively where my, my, uh, um, motorboard is that I've installed into the carriage, you'll see the slot that I'm pointing to right here. Effectively, this is where the belt is going to feed in. And there's a sprocket there for the motor. That's actually what's going to drive the belt and effectively move the carriage from left to right. So I'm going to ultimately, once I get the belt strung the entire length of the table, I'm actually going to line up the belt so that both ends, both the left side and the right side, line up more or less even with this. And I've got the belt straight across the entire length of the table from one end down to the other. So that's why I don't want to tighten anything just yet. I want to make sure I've got everything in the right position. So effectively, I have now done step 3A3 and 3A4. Um, and uh, I've tightened the set screws on the belt tensioner assembly, but I haven't tightened it to the table yet because I don't know exactly where this is going to go. So now effectively, I'm going to jump over to um, my, my brother instructions for the uh, Dream Motion that came with the clamps. Step 5A. The belt alignment, I'm sorry, belt, belt up, step 5A, the um, belt tensioner installation. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I've done 3A3 already, now I'm going to do 3A4, install the belt tensioner assembly. And that's, that's way down at the other end of the table, which is on the right hand side. And it's the same type of deal. I've got my clamps. I've got the screws that hold it in place. This, I'm not gonna take anything apart here because the belt's actually gonna feed into the slot. But effectively, I wanna put this on the end of the table, more or less, where I think the belt is gonna go. So at, at the moment, I'm just gonna set it there. Once I thread the belt through all of this, I'll be able to explain in better detail how to tighten this down. Okay, we are now back to step six. We're following the instructions that actually came with the carriage and with the uh, with the software now, and we're on the step six, we basically have the belt brackets in place, both for the short and the long side. Now we're going to take and thread the belts through the motor plate, starting with the frame, or basically the long belt. We're going to feed the long belt through the through the motor frame. Now you can see, I've got the motor frame here, and effectively the drive belt is going to be at the front of the machine. I'm standing at the back of the machine, obviously, but the front of the machine is going to feed through the front here. So effectively, what I need to do is feed the belt through this so that it's uh, it's uh, engaged with the motor uh, for the uh, for the uh, long belt for the uh, lateral left to right motion of the of the carriage. So to do that, step six that one says tilt the carriage onto its side. So again, this is this is I'm pointing at toward the front of the machine. That's where it's going to go. I'm going to tilt this to its side and then move to step 6.2 that says thread the long belt into the gearbox in the motor plate from the bottom until it comes out the top of the carriage. So I'm going to do that, push it through, and it's coming through the top of the carriage. And if I move the camera to the other side very carefully, I got this thing balanced here. A wise person would probably have somebody help balance this thing, but I'm not always a wise person. So you see the belts come through the top of the machine. Then basically it says step three, loop the, belt, move, loop the belt over and feed the belt back through the gearbox. So I'm just gonna loop this through. You see it's come through one end. I'm just gonna loop it through and the belt's got quite a bit of curl here. But I'm gonna feed it through and have it come out, come out the other side. And if this works properly, I should get it to come out the other side here. 
And that's going to be the tricky part. I think part of my problem is the belt's got an awful lot of curl to it. Let me do this. Let me just, just to get some of the curl, I'm just going to kind of just tweak the belt back the other way and just kind of smooth that curl out a little bit, see how that makes a difference. Now we're going to feed it back through the other side here. Let's see if this will work this time. That did it. Okay. That's a little trick then. If you got too much curl on the belt, just uh, smooth it out. So now I'll move the camera, move the camera back to the other side so you can see what I've done. And now you see I've got the belt coming out the other side. So it's basically looped around the two pulleys and uh, it's, it's uh, coming out the other side. What it now says, pull the rest of the slack through the motor plate to the belt tensioner. So basically we're going to pull this through just to uh, take up all the slack. And one thing that you probably should do, and I probably should have showed this before I started it, make sure you've got the belt twisted properly. You don't want to, when you get all the slack taken up, realize that the belt's got a twist to it. That's going to give you issues. Okay, so I've got the belt tightened up. I'm now going to take, I'm going to effectively lay my carriage back down and make sure I'm dealing with my uh, encoder there and feed the rest of this belt through the other side of the machine and bring it out to the other side. Okay, so now I have got the long belt threaded through the machine. The instructions say once I get the rest of the belt pulled through and step that four as I've just done, do not insert the belt into the tensioner yet. And the tensioner is the other end of this clamp. So I've got the belt threaded, but I'm not going to insert it just yet. I suspect I'm going to have to do a fair amount of lining it all up and syncing it up properly so that uh, the belt is perfectly straight and even across the entire carriage. That I suspect it'll come in another step. But anyway, bottom line is that I've got the belt threaded through the motor plate. Now we're going to move on to the next step. And so I'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, Doug's back again, and now we are up to step seven. We're gonna do pretty much what we just did with the long belt with the short belt. And taking a look at the machine again, here are my spools and sprockets for the short belt that's gonna get mounted. I'm gonna put the machine back on the carriage, and we're gonna work on seeing if we can thread the short belt through all of this as well. Um, this could be a little trickier, so we'll see how well it goes. First of all, I'm gonna take the machine, and we're going to set it back on the frame here and make mine my uh, encoder. Make sure this all gets lined correctly. Okay, we've got it mounted and I've got my belt here. Hang on a second, let me move the camera to the other side so you can see what I'm doing. And again, back, several steps back, we mounted the short belt to the belt frame on the other side of the machine. Obviously this is a much easier belt to deal with, it's much shorter. I'm gonna take the belt and effectively do what we did before. Um, Take the belt and I'm gonna feed it through the sprocket. And again, make sure I don't have any twists in the belt. So I'm gonna make sure I fed it through clean. And I'm going to, do what I did before, do a little bend on that so it's not quite as tight a deal. Um, the way I mounted this, let me get the belt threaded through the underside here, past the wheel, and make sure that everything is tight, everything looks straight. Now we're gonna take and feed the belt through. And the instructions actually say, Place the machine close to the bottom at an angle. So it probably wants me to hoist the machine up just a little bit. Let me see if I can do that. And again, this is an, another situation where you may want to have some assistance. Um, you take a look, I got the same two spools on, on the top side for the top, for the uh, short belt that I had on the underside for the long belt. And again, this is what helps the machine move back and forth. So I'm gonna feed this through. Make sure the belt is smooth. And then we feed the belt through one end, like we did before. I'm good at this now, I've done it once, so I should be an expert. Feed it through, get it back through the other side. There we go, hey, much more quickly this time. Okay, so that was no more. There we go, that looks much better. So now I can take the machine, lift it up, I'll feed the belt through to take up the slack. 
set it on the carriage. Make sure that my encoder wheel is accounted for here. Not quite there yet. There we go. All right, so now we've got the belt threaded through the carriage. There was a long, painful process. If I can still not, any my machine's still not straight here. I think the back ends are off. There we go, okay. So now I've got that all in place. So now if you can see, here's my short belt, the bracket at one end, feeding through underneath the motor plate and the two sprockets. Now we're coming out the very back of the machine. Painful process, but hey, you got, as I said, you got to watch me do this real time. Real time, that's what I had to go through. And let me just take the big shirt, yeah, and my front belt, none the worse for the wear. The long belt still seems to be in place. So now it says, feed the free end of the short belt into the belt tensioner. This funny little thing in the back of the machine. Let me pull this back so you can see what I'm doing. And I will move the camera to the underside of the machine. I mentioned the groove earlier. This is the groove I talked about. This will be the groove that the belt gets fed into. So I'm going to pull my belt, making sure it's straight so I don't go through what I just went through. Okay, so this is the straight part of it. I'm going to feed it into this slot. Now what I need to do is there's two, there's two uh, things here. One on the left and one on the right. Uh, the one on the, as I'm standing at the back of the machine, the one on the right needs to be loosened enough so that the one on the, one on the left right needs to be loosened enough so that the one on the left will turn freely. And I'm going to take this belt, feed it through the slot into the tensioner. And if I'm doing this correctly, I should be able to, there we go, turn, turn the wheel. Let me show you what I did. I fed, I have fed the belt in. The belt's fed through this little slot now. And in fact, you'll even see I fed it to the point where it's coming out the top. Uh, turn the left one until the belt gets tight. Let's see, the instructions say, feed it just to tighten the belt all the way through the tensioner. So that's what I've done. Let me just see what I'm doing. I've got the belt coming through the other end. Feels like it's relatively tight. And then I'm gonna take the one on the right-hand side and tighten it down. Okay, I think I've got this correct. You'll see that as I move the machine back and forth, you'll see how the belt kind of feeds in and out of the two spools there. It's kind of hard to tell. I know the lighting isn't the greatest. Hopefully you can see the belt going in one end and out the other and feeding as it's moving the machine back and forth. So, and this one's pretty simple. I say that after taking, what, five minutes to put the belt through? Um, but because this belt tensioner is pretty much what it needs to be, it should line up just right. So I do have a few things. I see I've got some looseness here. I know way back early on, I didn't tighten my, my bolts all the way. I'm gonna go through and just tighten my bolts for the rear tensioner and for the front clamp. I'll do that off camera. I mean, you can pretty much imagine what I need to do. I just make sure they're all lined up smooth. And, but I think I'm pretty good shape with the short belt. It looks like it's in place, and it looks like the, the ability, the motor has the ability to drive the machine back and forth. So uh, I'm quite pleased with that. It's moving nice and smooth. So let me fit, tighten those front and back bolts. We will conclude step seven, and then I'll be back in a little bit with step eight. Thanks for putting up with me. So now we are going to do effectively the same thing with the long belt. Now the long belt, as you see, we've already threaded through the motor board. So that should be good to go. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, and I see my camera battery starting to go dead, I'm gonna feed my belt through the tensioner on the long, on the, uh, long side. And so let me just move my camera so you can see what I'm doing again. That's a little bit easier to see what I'm doing this time. I'm feeding, feeding the uh, belt through the tensioner. I am going to, let me just set this down, Rick. bear with me a moment. There. I've loosened, loosened that thing on the left-hand side. Now you can see I'm turning the right-hand side and I'm in the process of tightening. Now here it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. It's going to be a little bit of trial and error. So if my battery goes dead before I'm done, um, I'll let you know I did before I'm finished. But effectively, what I need to do is move the machine from left to right all the way and make sure that the belt is perfectly straight from one end to the other. Uh, I don't want it to bow or bend or fall out of place because if I do, then I'm going to have issues down the road. So I'm gonna start, I move the camera closest to y'all. I bring the camera, you see I'm bringing the machine toward you. I'm watching the belt feed through. I haven't tightened anything yet. All right, it looks like I'm out of sync here. I need to pull. 
let's see, move it about this way, I'm moving it about toward me, and you'll see the belt, as I'm watching the belt, if you can look down in there, I'm watching the belt feed through, uh, everything looks smooth, looks smooth all the way to the end, all right, I think I'm in a good position at this end of the machine. So I think I got my belt in position where I need it to be. So forgive me a moment while I go and get a tool here. If I can see what I did with it. Um, let's see here now. As I said, I'm truly doing this as I go along. Oh, I know what I need to do. Let's see, I'm going to, I've already tightened down the tension around the belt. What I need to do is, is, is position this thing exactly where it needs to be on the frame, the actual clamp on the right hand side. Now, I had reached and gone for my fa fancy little colored handled Allen wrenches that uh, I will need to do to perform this procedure. And let me move the machine away here. The problem I'm gonna have though is, if I use the fancy little wrenches that came with this thing, I need to be able to tighten these two things right here as you can see, there's not a lot of way for me to turn it. But thankfully, again, the Grace Company thinks of everything. They provided yet another Allen wrench when it's a little bit easier to deal with. So I'm now going to take this and tighten on the two screws here that'll hold the clamp in place for the right hand side of the drive belt. Now, if you'll walk with me down to the other end of the table, we're going to take a look at the other side of this thing. And watch as my belt feeds through. It's feeding through. I can, I can tell. I'm already, I can already tell. I need to adjust it. You can tell how it's kind of pulling forward as it feeds through the motor. So I'm going to need to move this clamp this way as well. Looking good. Looking good. And that appears to be straight over there too. So. I'm going to tighten, I think I got this about in the right spot. We'll take our wrench and tighten this as well here. I've done this correctly. The belt looks pretty smooth at this end. Appears to be feeding through just fine. Let me lock that down. We'll feed it down to the other side. And I think I need to tighten it a little bit. So let me get to my tensioner here and we'll Tighten this thing and get it nice and snug. The instructions, ironically, don't say how, how tight to tighten it. So I'm just making it kind of uh, hand tight so that it doesn't flop against the uh, frame. All right, so now we'll just walk this down one into the other once more. Just looking straight at this end. And now we'll walk this down to the other side and the belt seems to be going smoothly through the motorboard. I suspect the belt would have to be tightened periodically as the machine is used. That's looking good. Okay. We'll lock it back down once more. And again, if you look in there, move the machine out of the way. So you can, let me pull it this way. Yeah, you can see, it's hard to tell. You can tell that sprocket turning in there. Okay, I think we have mastered step eight. Hi there, Doug is back. We have now moved to the front of the machine. Um, and we are now going to move into the last few steps to actually get the hardware in place. We're actually up to step nine, tablet mount installation. Now forgive me, I've kind of got the camera mounted on a step ladder here and I've got it mounted in front of the machine. Just to show you pretty much what I've done since that last step, I have gotten out the remaining parts for this thing. I've also reinstalled the idler rail and the take up rail. So those are back in place now. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'll set this up on my step ladder here. This is gonna be interesting because I'm working around the step ladder right now. So I'm not sure what the video is gonna look like. But basically what I'm gonna do now is actually begin the, the process of installing the tablet mount to the actual uh, Q14. So to do that, step one, it says before installing the tablet bracket, you must first remove the OLED, this guy, from the sewing machine. So press down on the clip on top, press down on the clip on top of the OLED clip on the display mount and pull the OLED straight out. Okay, so apparently I'm pushing down on this thing maybe. Let's see. I think so. Hang on a second. I think I'm pushing down on this and I'm pulling straight out, but I can't do that and hold the camera at the same time. 
So you have to trust me what I'm doing there. I'm going to stick my finger down while I just put my hand on and pull it out. And looky there, it comes out. Perfect. Once I do that, the after display has been removed, disconnect the ribbon cable. There would be this little guy here. Excuse me, part of my stand fell off. So we'll pull this out and disconnect the ribbon cable. Very carefully, of course, when you get into this high tech stuff, it takes a little bit. Okay, so I have now physically removed the OLED display off of the Q14. And we'll set this aside. And now we'll turn the page. Page 14, using the M3 Allen wrench. Loosen all four set screws on the tablet mount. Well, what's the tablet mount? There would be this thing. This is, a, apparently we're gonna somehow install this on there. And there are four set screws. Screws are gonna hold this in place. There's two screws on the outside edge. This one here, and flip it over. This one there, and then two on the front. I've already begun to do some of this ahead of time. I haven't done them all. And it says use the, 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 the use the M3 Allen wrench, which comes with this. And of course, I like using the wrenches that came with the frame. So the one with the red handle appears to be the M3 Allen wrench. So I'm gonna take this and loosen the set screws, basically so that they are flush. That's, that, that's an outside one done. Now we'll do the one on the front here. Loosen this one, okay, very good. And then the two on the other side, this one is mostly loose. We'll do the rest of it here. And then finally the one on the end. Sorry for the noise in the background. I've got a big yellow cat helping me in the room here while I'm working. The instructions talk about placing the tablet mounts onto the handlebars as shown here. You will notice the tabs, which have been circle, which I'm not quite sure what it means, but basically there's two tabs on either side of this thing. There's a tab here, and one on the other side. They're kind of spring-loaded. You can kind of push them in and out. These two tabs are supposed to go into, there's two holes. There's, if I can just move my camera real, I'll set this down and move the camera. There is a hole here and another hole over here. Those two little things that I'm pushing in, I need to kind of push it so that they feed in and I slide the bracket in and they basically uh, they basically pop into place and go into those two holes. So what I'm gonna do is, it says do this one side at a time. So I'm gonna start with the left hand side and use my little Allen wrench, push it in and get it to clear past that metal rod. That's one side. Now let me walk around to the right hand side and do the same thing, push this in. I thought the belt was difficult. This is almost pr proving to be almost as challenging. Push that in. There we go. All right, so I've got them pushed in. Now, supposedly, I can push. Oh, it popped out on me here. I can push both of these in, and this should actually hold in place. Hang on, the one on the left side popped out now. This may fall in the category of fast forwarding. Okay, we're getting there. Now we've slid it in place. And if I get that in just right, hang on a second. I've got it in place. I just, I just haven't popped into the holes yet. That's kind of what I'm working. There, there's, all right, got one side. Actually, I think I have them both in place. Let's see. Oh, there it goes. There's the right side and there's the left side. There we go. What I had to do is I'm pushing inward on the uh, inside of those tabs to get them to line up. So now this thing is actually firm in the uh, slot. One of the things I did while I was this, I've actually done about three or four takes on this. What I had not done earlier, when I loosened the four screws, I didn't loosen them far enough. You almost have to loosen them to the point where it looks like they're gonna fall out. Uh, once you do that, then the thing seems to slide in reasonably well, but you still have to kind of wiggle it a little bit to get those little tabs to pop into those two holes. But I seem to have done that. So that's in place. Now it says, finally, tighten all four set screws, starting with the outside ones first and then the front ones. All right, so they're both about where they need to be, left and right front. And that sucker is in sturdy. I guess if there's any reason I ever take that out someday, I have no idea how I how go about it, but we'll cross that bridge if I ever have to come to it. We are back with step 10, 
tablet tray installation. This appears to be one of the easiest things to do. I say that before I do it, but basically this is the tablet tray. It's going to go like this. Effectively, the tablet that's going to be powering the motorboard and the sewing machine will fit in here. And it's got a fair amount of adjustability to it. If we take a look at the back here, you'll see there's several screws here, here, and here to adjust clamps back and forth. These will get adjusted as needed um, when it comes time to actually mount the tablet. I'm going to discuss mounting the tablet at the point in time when we start installing the software. But for now, um, we've got this thing. It's got a fairly long bolt on the back, and it's got this thing uh, basically uh, what do they call it using the knob technical term so we'll fit this thing through the hole in the frame we just mounted and we'll take the knob tie it on like so you can't see what I'm doing but trust me I'm putting it on tightening it and this will be adjusted according to I suppose personal preference how you want it to be and again just to take this around showing the back side I just put this knob on and tightened it and it feeds the bolt through and basically I have mounted mounted the tablet tray onto the Q14 one final addendum the manual doesn't talk about doing this at all but I suspect because I look at the pictures, this has to happen. We need to put the uh, monitor back in place on the machine, which we should be able to do. I should be able to click the ribbon cable back in place. Again, we took it out just so we'd have room to work. So I'm going to fit the ribbon back in place. I believe I have it. And click it back into the slot so it clicks. It clicked quite nicely. I should have it all nice and snug and in place. Um, so I should be all done. We're going to start hooking everything back up, at least from what we originally had. So based upon what we had before, I've got my two encoders, front and back. I'm going to put those back in place, front and back encoders. So that's the front one goes into that. I'm sorry, the one that goes, the top encoder goes into the top one. The one with the longer cord for the lower encoder for the carriage goes into the bottom. I've got those both plugged in. Um, okay, once I've done that, I'm going to set the camera down. I am going to walk over and get the power cord. That plugs into this thing. We're going to take the power cord, plug it back in the back. I've got everything powered off right now, so there's no big deal there. I'm also going to move a plug around. Right now, this thing is essentially plugged directly into the wall at the moment. Instead, I'm going to take the cord. I'm going to plug the cord into the power strip. I'll just plug it in right next door to where we got the motorboard plugged in. So I've got that plugged in. I'm also going to take the cord that was originally that's on the power strip, which I haven't undone yet. I think I'm getting close to the point where I'm able to do that. Take the tie off, unravel the cord, and we'll take this and we'll plug it in with a Q14 high we plugged in. There's actually an extension cord we have here that's plugged into a uh, into a uh, surge protector. Okay, so basically now I'm I'm going to play. I'm going to kind of neaten up the cords a little later, and I'll probably have my wife around when we do that. But basically, right now I've got everything hooked up more or less what we had before. Uh, I've got my upper and lower encoders in place. I got the power cord plugged in now the, but now the power cord is plugged into the power strip and the power strip is now plugged into effectively what's going to go in, go into the wall outlet. So we've got all that done. Now we need to start hooking up some of the new stuff. So I'm going to walk back around to the front of the machine as you see a big yellow cat helping me here. There are now three other wires that get connected. The first is, a, is kind of a cable, it's kind of a telephone cord looking thing. You'll see it's got a couple of ends on this like you used to see on the old phone jacks. One of these appears to go into the motor board, which you'll see there's an actual plug on the far right that this clicks into. So I'm just gonna slide that, click it in, makes a little click so we know we're, we're smooth. According to the manual, this plugs in to the other phone jack with the blue mark on the back of the machine, directly above the um, directly above the uh, encoders. So I'm going to take and we're going to plug that in on top here. Okay, so I've got that in place. I've also got two USB cords. There's a long one and a short one. I've got the long one right here in front of me first. It's got basically a USB connection on one end and something that looks kind of like a funky power connection on the other. This actually connects into the motor board on the back of the machine. There's a little plug here on the far left that that'll fit into. I'm going to click that in place. I 
it goes kind of tight, but it looks like it's in there. So I plug that in there. The other end of this goes into the back of the machine. There's a USB connection on the back. So we'll take, we'll plug that in there. The manual talks about making sure these are fairly tight and snug. They can look like they're in, but not really. So let me just set this down real quick and make sure I'm, I've got that in place. And it seems to be. So I've got that connected to the back of the machine. The last cable has got two USB connectors on it. This is going to be the machine to tablet connection. There's actually a USB connection on the top of the machine. I'm going to plug this into right there. And then this other cable, that's going to plug into the tablet when I get that set up. So I'm just going to drape that over the, over the, uh, over the uh, tablet mount for now. Okay, now we get to the fun part. Um, I've gotten all the hardware installed, and you watch me very painstakingly install motor boards and belts and clamps and plug things in and all that. Now we're actually ready to get to the good stuff, actually installing the QCT4 software. Uh, let me take a show you what I've done since we last got together. I basically took, we bought ourselves a brand new Windows tablet, um, Windows Surface. I believe we got the i5 processor. Um, it's got all the processor speed and memory that the manual requires. I have mounted it into the bracket that we installed. And if you let me walk around to the back of the machine, what I'll show you is basically you'll see the mounting screws here, 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 and here. I loosen those. I slid the clamps out so it would accommodate the width of the tablet, set the tablet in, and tighten everything down. I also moved this clamp here on the left as you look at the back of the machine, higher up than the one that's defaulted on the other side. Basically because you'll see on the side here where the power cord plugs in, I wanted to make sure that I had the ability to, log, to plug the power cord into the back of this thing. Excuse me. So uh, basically, I've got the tablet set up. I've got access to the ports that I'm going to be using on, the, using on this thing in a second. I'm going to walk back around to the front. I have gone through the setup. I, I filmed it separately. So I'm going to have a separate video that shows um, the actual uh, setting up of Windows. It was a brand new tablet. So I went through the whole process of setting the parameters, logging into the network, doing the updates and all that. Um, but now I should be, I'll set, set myself back in my perch here ready to actually install the QCT4 software. And the software actually comes in a <laughs> pretty little box that I'm showing here. And in fact, I'm taking out the box. It's very neatly packaged. It's got a little container, it holds it in. Cute little thing, QCT4 software touch. I'm gonna slide it out of its little, little, uh, little wrapper here. And we'll pop it open to reveal, dun, dun, dun. open at the right side, here we go. Essentially, it has got in it a USB card. Effectively, this has got the software on it. So I'm gonna take the card out of its little, out of its little holster here. Bear with me just a moment, I had a heck of a time. I've actually taken this thing out once before. I was doing some, um, doing some reading, here we go, I've got it out. So basically, this is what it looks like right here. Um, Doing some reading on the QCT4 uh, um, Facebook group, and they commented a couple things. One person had an issue doing the install, and just to be on the safe, she had she was able to recover it, but just to be on the safe side, I actually took this use this uh, USB card, I inserted it into my home computer upstairs, and copied its contents onto what onto my hard drive, so that if anything goes south during this install, I've got the ability to go back upstairs and copy all the software back onto this card. So that's the first thing. The other thing that I read, I don't know how relevant this is, I'm gonna try it anyway and see how much uh, Windows yells at me. One person said that Windows Defender, which is the built-in software for Windows that actually uh, um, looks for viruses, it thinks that this is actually a virus. At least one person said that, and the way they got around it was to go into the Windows Defender software and disable it. Um, I'm going to do that temporarily from the point of view of doing the install. So I'm going to go into the control panel on Windows. I'm going to go into system, I believe is where, oh, not system, my mistake. I'm going to go into update and security. I'll do that again. There we go. I'm going to go into Windows Defender. I am going to open the Windows Defender Security Center. Virus and threat protection. Virus and threat protection settings. And I'm going to turn off real-time protection. And I knew I was going to be upset. Yeah, I want to do that. I want to, let's see, I'm going to shut off cloud-based protection as well. Yeah, it's going to complain about that too. I'm just going to temporarily turn it all off. 
And if I get viruses on here, you can say I'm just dumb enough to do this on my own computer. But I don't want to run into any issues, so I'm going to do this temporarily. Once I install the QCT software, I'm going to turn it all back on. So we'll get these screens off. So now I've got my little USB card. And on, if I move my camera here, on the side, we have a USB port. So now we're going to insert the USB card into the USB port. And I didn't lock the machine down, so the machine's rolling on me. So let me just push it in. Okay, we're pushed in. And let me just lock the machine down here so it doesn't go rolling on me. Okay, I've inserted it. And let's see what it's going to do. It made a funny noise, so hopefully it's figuring out that there's actually software on that thing, and it's going to try to install it. While well, watching this real time, so whatever happens here, we're all going to learn all about it at once. <laughs> For all I know, it shut off. I'm not sure. Let me hit the power button, see what happens. It actually did shut off, so let's scroll it up. Okay, so I've got the USB in. Um, it actually installed it on that's good. It's, it's, I may I must have actually hit the power button because I did power it off when I stuck it in there I guess There we go Do I want this to make changes? Yes, I do. Okay, so it's telling me welcome to the quilters creative touch beginnings setup wizard I should point this out. We actually bought the beginnings version. We didn't get the standard um, We know that it's not as full featured But basically we just want to give it a try and see how well we like it and if we're happy with it uh, maybe down the road, we'll actually go in and do the uh, the full standard version. But we got the beginnings version. So we close, it says close all applications before you begin. And there's nothing else on here. So I'm just going to say I'm good to go. I'm going to click next. There we go. And of course, you get the whole license agreement stuff. I'm going to accept it and say next. And what do I want it to install? It's going to install on the C drive, basically the root, uh, the main data storage on the on the tablet, and a folder called Powered by QuiltCAD. So if I'm looking at the geek in me says if I want to know what the software is, I can look in Powered by Quilt uh, QuiltCAD. I'm going to take the default and click Next. Okay, it's going to create a program shortcut shortcut called Quilters Creative Touch Beginnings. I'm going to take the default and click Next again. Uh, select additional tasks and do I want to install a desktop icon? Yes, I do. I want to have a nice little icon on the screen here that I can click on if I need to. Click next again. And now it's got everything, all the, all the information I've just said. I'm going to go ahead and click install. And now we're installing all the goodies onto the tablet. So um, it seems to be zipping along quite nicely. And like in a typical Windows software install, it's unzipping a bunch of files and putting them in a directory somewhere and changing changing um, all the different, different settings, all the uh, stuff that it does in Windows. Now it says it's done. Completing the Quilter's Creative Touch Beginning Software Setup. Finish. Okay, so apparently I'm now done. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually going to remove the USB drive from the computer, from the tablet, so it's gone. Put it back in this little safety case here, Just in case I need it again for future reference. Close it up, seal it up. All right, so now I've got the icon on my screen. So I believe this thing is going to do something. Let's go ahead and click on this and see what it does. Okay. It's doing some setup. Something about a file transfer status window. It's transferring a bunch of stuff from here to there, I guess. Whatever that is. So will that do its thing? Okay, now it says it's looking for the... Uh, acceptance of the user license. I thought I did that on the install, but hey, we'll do it again. We will agree to the cabin cabin logic license logic license agreement. Click OK. Are you going to be using this device tablet with your automated sewing system? Uh, the answer is going to be yes. We're going to hook it up to the Q14. So we'll say yes. The USB drivers must be loaded to control this hardware. This is a one-time process only. It's telling me to click on the load drivers button to start the load process. All right. Uh, once I do that, it says the file explorer or the thing that I just did to start this in the first place. It'll pop up and I need to click on something called CDM21216 underscore setup that EX8 to uh, launch the driver loader. Interesting. Follow the prompts and then close the file explorer and click OK to actually start the process. So I'm going to go ahead and click load drivers. Now I need to click on the CDM21216 underscore setup file. Do I want this app to make changes to your device? Yes, I do. 
Now we're installing, again, these are the drivers I apparently that's gonna allow this thing to talk to the uh, QCT4. QC, QCT, I'm um, the 14, uh, the QNIC 14 plus. It's been a long day. Okay, click extract to unpack the drivers to launch the installer, all right? Let's do that. That was extremely fast. Okay, welcome to the device driver installation wizard, all right? And we're gonna install something else. All right, and then we gotta accept another license agreement. Does anybody ever read these things? I'd be curious if anybody's ever taken the time to read it and understands what's there. I worked in the software development world for many years and I have never once read one of those things from cover to cover. Okay, the drivers were successfully installed on this computer. We can now connect the device to this computer. All right, well, let me go ahead and click finish. It says close this, it told me to do, and click okay after I've completed the driver load process. Well, I've already done that, so I'm gonna click okay. And now click okay to restart the program. So apparently it's going to restart the uh, uh, do Creative Touch. Okay, so now select Sewing Machine Brand. We have a QNIC. So we're going to click on QNIC. We have a 14 Plus. That's what we're installing on. We're installing it. We'll click the 14 Plus. <laughs> File not found. Oh, that's, that's, that's very interesting. We'll try this again. Let's do the Quilter's Creative Touch. Restart it. We are unable to connect to the automatic quilting system. All right, I know exactly what the problem is. Remember we installed that little cable down the top of the machine to actually uh, talk to it? It doesn't see it. Let's plug it in then. That's a simple thing to do. Would have been nice if the instructions had just said somewhere along the line, plug the cable in before you do this step. So I'm gonna plug it in here. And of course the other end of this plugs into the top of the Q14. Okay, that's in place. Um, I'm going to basically uh, cancel. And it talked about power cycling the carriage. What I haven't done yet is power the carriage up. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, I've got the actual machine in place, but I don't have the carriage plugged in. So I'm gonna take and uh, plug the carriage in. So it's got juice. And it's making all kinds of funky noises so the carriage is in place. And even though there's no thread in there, I'm gonna power on the QNIC machine as well. So everything's all plugged in and talking to it to to what to or to it to itself. Okay, so now I've got everything powered up. I've got the uh, I've got the uh, Q14 powered up, I've got the motorboard powered up, and of course the tablet's powered up. So let's do this again. New installation. Make sure the sewing machine needle is up and move the carriage to the center of the sewing area. Okay, I'm not sure what it wants me to do here, but let me do this. Let me actually do that. Let's move the carriage to, I mean, for the moment, I'm just gonna move it to the center of the table. And now you didn't see what I did, so let me just pull this out of the way here. The machine may do something cool, I don't know, so I'll give you kind of a, kind of a, a bird's eye view of what's happening. Needle is up. I move to the center of the sewing area. If I click okay, okay. The motor's humming along here. And in fact, the machine, if you can tell, it's moving just a little bit forward and backward and a little bit left and right. Okay, now it wants to do a firmware upgrade, which is typical for any of these things. You know, you get brand new software, you, it's firmware's, gonna, firmware's going to uh, get updated. It's probably gonna download off the internet. So it says select yes to continue with the firmware upgrade. Highly recommended. Let's do it. Okay, please turn the sewing machine off for firmware updates, but leave the carriage on. All right, well, let me just walk to the back here. I'm gonna shut the machine off. Okay, the Q14 Plus is now off. I've left the carriage. There really is no on off switch to the carriage. I just plug it in. So I've just, I just got it plugged into the power strip. I'm um, gonna do that and click okay. Okay, now I'm seeing messages here, motor driver update. Uh, it's waiting, there's all kinds of information that pops up. Um, well, that's interesting. Press the firmware update button on the side of your lower carriage. That's news to me, I didn't realize there was a firmware update button. Let me get my camera and we'll walk, follow me as we walk around the other side of the machine. I think it'd probably be the best way you can see it. And you see where I've got all my cables plugged in, my USB and my funky phone cord that we did earlier? There's a firmware button here. I'm gonna push this little button right where my finger is right there. Okay, I've pushed it in. Now, I can't see my screen at the moment, so let me walk back around to 
to the tablet and see if it's doing anything. Not doing anything yet. The older models do not have this button. Press OK to continue. Let's do that. Press OK. And it is doing the motor driver update. Okay, well, it's still moving the machine back and forth. Now it says power cycle, the motor carriage, then turn the sewing machine back on. All right, so the fancy term for power cycle is <laughs> shut it off and turn it on. Okay, so I'm just going to do this with the uh, power strip. I'm going to shut the power strip off. We've hit 30 seconds. Let me hit the power strip. Okay, we've powered the system back up. I'm also going to turn on the sewing machine. So the Q14 is now running. Let's walk back around to the front and look at the tablet again. Okay, we've power cycled the motor carriage and turned the sewing machine on. We'll hit OK. And let's see what happens next. That's verifying the firmware update complete. All right, that looked happy. Register your software now. Apparently, you've got a month to update this thing. It says you must register your software before the above time counts down to zero. If you fail to register within this time period, the software will revert to demonstration mode. We encourage you to do this as soon as possible. The registration process only takes a few minutes. If you choose to register later, you can still run your fully functional software until the time expires. Do you want to register now? I am going to say yes. And I see the Grace Company very conveniently puts their number on the screen. Apparently, if you wait too long and you run out of time. So I'm going to say yes. Okay, now it says get product key from thumb drive. I am going to get my thumb drive back. I'm going to unplug the Q14 from the thumb drive and plug the USB back in. Okay, I'm going to ignore for now. The system is not connected over the USB. It must be in simulation mode. All right. It says get product key from thumb drive. Let's give that a try and see what happens. We are going to locate the product key that came with your thumb drive. If you have more than one thumb drive, repeat this process for each one. Insert your thumb drive into this computer's USB port and click OK. I've already done that. We'll click OK. And they are searching success. We found the product key on the thumb drive. Click OK to exit. And that's kind of convenient. It actually filled it in for me. I've got the QMO. I've got my, my product key, the code, QCT beginnings, which is what I have. I appear to have done that, so I'm just going to click Next. Okay. Uh, now let's get a little information about the device this thing is running on. Uh, the device name is the name of this computer. Well, basically, it's the name of this tablet. Um, so the device of this thing is called desktop dash uh, VQ3L, some, something or other. We need, we'll, we'll probably need to keep this in mind if we ever call the uh, Grace Company for anything. But that's the name of the device we're using, so I'm just going to continue it and click Next. And if I've submitted all the software product information, we're just about ready to submit it. If online, which I am, I've still got, I'm still connected to the internet, I am going to, let's see here, select which submission you prefer. If not, call us, well, that's interesting. It wants me to either email it in or do it through a phone call. I'm going to click on email. We're going to do our first name. Our first name is my wife's name, J. Let's see here. Backspace, shift, J. That all looks correct. Let's click submit right now. Okay. My wife is going to receive an email from kevinlogic.com at some point and follow its instructions to complete the registration process. So. Her email is upstairs. I don't know how quick real time this is going to be or not, but I'm going to stop the video at this point, go upstairs, wait for her to get the email, and then once I get the information, we'll bring it back down and we'll get this registration process complete. Doug back again. We're just going to wrap this thing up. Uh, we have basically followed the instructions that you saw us do. Uh, and we asked for activation by email. Um, Janet got back a message fairly quickly that said, uh, this is the activation. Um, she had to respond back to that message with the phrase registration info. And she did that pretty quickly. And of course, we did this Sunday night. I would say by early afternoon the following day on Monday, she got back an email from, um, from um, Cabin Logic indicating the registration keys for the software. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to go and extra, ent actually enter those registration keys so we can actually use the software from 100%. Um, without the thing expiring in the next 30 days. So I'm just going to fire up Quilter's Creative Touch. Make sure the sewing machine needle is up and move the carriage to the center of the sewing area. That's the case. I'm going to click OK. 
And the uh, motor's moving back and forth, testing everything, I suppose. Verifying the firmware, it is current. Um, register your software now. Do you run a register now? I'm going to say no because I've already done this step. I've already gone through and sent the email. What I now want to do is actually enter the codes. So now I've gotten to my, uh, my main menu. What the instructions say is um, from the home screen, just where I'm at right now, click on help. Click on help. It then says enter, click on enter keys, which is the very bottom one in the left hand column, left hand column, enter keys. We'll click that. Then it says select registration keys, which is three items here. It's the very top one. Okay. It says enter the access key into its appropriate field if it hasn't been entered before. So the access key, we'll click on that. The access key says it is this following code, which I am not going to say out loud, if you'll forgive me. Okay, that's why oh, I see what happened. It had to be, I typed it on lowercase, it needed to be uppercase. So that appears to be what the issue is there. Okay, activation key. Um, let's see, enter activation and access, enter the access key into its appropriate field. Enter the activation key for the device you are running your program on into its appropriate field. So I'm assuming it's this field. So I'm gonna click on the update field and enter the code. I'm gonna lock everything. So I type all my characters in uppercase. Mm. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, looks good. And then click enter. It seems to like that. Um, click close. The program must be would like to be restarted. It says if you have properly entered the keys, the program must be restarted. Would you like to be restarted now? I'll say yes. Click OK to restart the program. Make sure the sewing needle is up and the carriage is moved to the center of the sewing area. Motor firmware is current, we're managing keys, loading images. We're good to go, we're connected, and we didn't get an error message. So our software key has been entered and we should be in good shape. Uh, we're ready to start with QCT4. So I'm sure my wife is gonna be very happy. I thank you for watching this. I hope you found this set of videos useful. If you have any questions, feel free to respond to the YouTube channel. I'll be more than happy to answer anything that I can figure out on my own, if, um, if, that's, if that's the case. So thank you for watching, happy, creative touch quilting. One last thing. This was something I pointed out during the installation. As you recall, when I was uh, setting up the firmware, I did not have the actual USB connection between the tablet and the QNIC 14 Plus. Um, this caused, you saw a couple of error messages when um, uh, we were doing the install. Come to find out, when we actually first tried to use the machine, once the um, once the uh, everything was all set up, we could get the motor board to move the machine around back and forth. But what we weren't able to do, it was not actually activating the sewing machine. It would act like it was sewing, like it doesn't. It's uh, in its um, trace mode, but the needle did not actuate at all. And so we didn't know if there was an issue with the software, if we had a hardware problem. Come to find out, it all boiled down to the fact that I didn't have everything connected right. And so what we did um, to fix this, it was some, some of trial and error, but it did work. We went into the help screen, as you'll see here. Under help, we clicked on about. And there's a whole bunch of tiny print here. But there's one little option that says sewing machine information. We click on that. Forgive me, I don't have, there we go. You'll see we've got the, this is what we selected during the install, QNIC Motion, QNIC 14 Plus. We went back in and we decided to just change the sewing machine model to the exact same thing. We clicked on Change Sewing Machine Model. Forgive me, I got, my fingers aren't quite right for this here. Okay, and we just selected the exact same thing all over again. We selected machine brand QNIC, and machine model 14 plus. And then we clicked OK. And we clicked OK again. 
that actually solved the problem so that when my we went to actually start sewing uh the needle would actually work correctly so everything appeared to be fine so that was that was the one little thing that got us around it now if you actually had the cables hooked up when the uh, you did the install of the software and the firmware you won't have that problem but in case you do just hooking it, hooking it up properly. Also, make sure that your machine is turned on. The, the carriage should be turned on and the sewing machine should be turned on with everything connected. Go ahead and do what I just did and that should get you around that little issue. So just a little tip to keep in mind just in case something comes up. Thank you much and uh, we'll talk later. The power switch is on the top left. I'm gonna hit the power switch and we're gonna fire it up and see what happens. Hopefully you can see this. If it doesn't work, I'll turn the lights on, but I wanted to make sure you got a full view of what the tablet looks like. So right now, all it's got is the Windows logo with a little circle thing floating around the bottom there. And let's see what it does. Okay, it's telling me to wait a moment. That's a good sign, I hope. While we're doing this, I'm going to adjust just for experimentation purposes. I'm going to turn the lights on in the room, see if that how it alters the actual picture that I'm recording. I think it's better with the lights off. I'm going to switch the lights back off for now. Okay. So we're still loading. It's asking me, do I want to continue in the selected language of English? I'm an English speaking guy. I'm going to click yes. Hi there, I'm Cortana, and I'm here to help. A little sign in here, a touch of Wi-Fi there, and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do. You can use your voice or the keyboard along the way, and if you'd like me to stay quiet, just select the sound icon. If you need an assistive screen reader, press the Windows, Control, and Enter keys at the same time to enable narrator. Okay, enough intro. Let's dig in. Your region is set to the United States. Is that right? Yes. Your keyboard is set to US. Want to stick with that? Yes. Do you also type with another keyboard layout? No. Next up, the legal stuff. In short, you have to accept to use Windows. You can decline but then, you know, no windows. Do you accept? Yes. Accept. All right, we'll just click. I'm one of those now people who never listens. Now let's get you listens. connected to a network. That way you can get updates, apps, and cat videos as soon as possible. How about the first one on the list? Want to use that one? Yes. Now type your credentials. Type what you want to name your account. Janet George. Okay, apparently he wants me to type this in, so I'm just going to type in my wife's name. Okay, now type a password for your account. Uh, forgive me while I stop the video so I don't advertise my password to the entire world. One moment. Okay, password has been entered. It's super memorable. Hit next. And one more time to make sure we've got it right. Okay, going on break. Just a second. Okay, I've confirmed. Let's try this again. Great. Now. With an offline account, if you forget your password, the only way to retrieve it is with a hint. So make sure it's memorable. Okay, let's type in the hint. I'll be right back. I've typed in the hint, so now this thing is still chugging away. Let's see what happens. Use Windows Hello to unlock your PC. Quick as a wink, with just your face. No wink required. Want to set that up now? I'm going to say no to this simply because... I'm, a, I'm not going to be the user of the system my wife is. I don't want her to use my face to start this thing. So we'll skip for now. Hey, look. 
It's the me part of setup. Can I have permission to use the info I need to do my best work? No. These are the settings Microsoft recommends. Go ahead and review them and select accept when you're ready. Okay, so I given that this tablet is strictly going to be used only for the purposes of the Q14, I'm going to turn off everything. Location access, diagnostics, relevant ads. I certainly want to see ads. Speech recognition. I don't want Cortana getting in the way right now. And tailored experiences with diagnostic data. I'm going to turn this all off. Um, if it's like anything Microsoft related, I'm sure at some point in time I can go in and turn it all back on. And if we find down the road we want to turn one of these back on, I'll post something to our YouTube and indicate that we made a change. So we're just going to take all that and I'm going to accept not ex accepting any of this. Okay, that's the last step. We need to get a few more things polished up for you and Windows will be all yours. Looking forward to helping out. Okay, we may have a bit of a pause here. I may fast forward this if this truly does take several minutes. Okay, I've got the home screen. The first thing that I see immediately, and hopefully this will have me correct it, this machine is set to the Pacific time zone. The time being shown in the lower right is actually three hours behind what the time is in the time zone I'm sitting in, which is Eastern US time zone, Eastern Standard Time. So we'll let this thing keep chugging away. I'm a little surprised that as part of the setups, Microsoft's usually pretty good about asking you where you're going to use the machine. Although I suppose the difference though is because I did not give it access to my location, it didn't go in and figure out, oh, you're in the Eastern time zone. So first thing I'm going to do, and not that this is overly critical for the purposes of their Quilters uh, QCT4 software, I'm just going to, hopefully I can just click on the time. And let's see here. Uh, what if I click on the actual time itself? What does let me do? Nothing. Again, forgive me. I'm just kind of faking this as we go along here. Uh, in fact, what I'm used to doing with Microsoft is just going into the control panel. So let's click on the settings, the little gear. And let's see. Display, notifications, power, personalization. Which one of these things would be a good one? Time and language. There we go. Let's click on that. And let's tell it. I want it to set the time automatically. I don't... Let's see, I do want to indicate that this is going to be, here we go, Eastern Time, U.S. Canada. All right, that makes a big difference there, and I believe that's all I want to do. So if I've done that correctly, I should be able to, yeah, we're back. we got the correct time now. So we'll get this off the screen. Okay. Um, I think this thing is ready to go. I can't think of anything else I want to do. So uh, with that said, I'm going to stop the video here. And then the next thing I'm going to start recording is the actual installation of the QCT4. So I'm going to take care of that. But in the meantime, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, this is Doug Beck. One thing that I guess I must have missed when I was setting this up along with resetting the time, apparently it did not ask me or I kind of skipped over the step that let me connect to our local internet. Uh, that's obviously required for at least from the point of view of at least getting all the, all the software updates in here. So I got into the control panel, went into networking, reselected the local network that I want to connect to and entered in the uh, password for that network. I've done that and now I'm in Windows Update and as I suspected what it needed to do, it needs to go in and update simply because there's, I'm sure there's been Windows Update since this tablet was first created. So you'll see there's a message update status says my device is at risk, is out of date, it's got important security updates, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to check for updates. So I'm, now I'm connected to my network. Um, if you're familiar with Windows, uh, this is look pretty much like a Windows PC along those orders. I'm kind of new to a Windows tablet. I'm tablets in our house are all Android. <laughs> so uh, so we purposely bought, a window, purposely bought a Windows tablet strictly for the reason of, um, what do you call it, of using the QCT4. So 
that's what's going to be happening right now with this thing. And so I'm going to continue on with the process of updating the tablet. I suspect I'll skip over a lot of this in the video, but I want to make sure that I truly have all the updates on here before I go ahead and install the QCT4. So I'll be standing by while this is going in. Okay, it seems like I've been gone an awfully long time. Um, I have gone through the process of installing updates. Now, I've actually been away for about an hour and a half. Um, the syst my particular tablet's been having issues just installing a, what appears to be an optional Windows update, having nothing to do with the um, QCT4 software install I'm about to do. So I think I'm in good shape. I'm not going to worry about it right now. All the critical updates have installed. I'll just, take, I'll just go, go back into the control panel where I was earlier, hitting the little uh, um, cog there, the little belt, little thing, and uh, update in security. You'll see this is the one that's been kind of temporarily trying to install, but it appears to be a feature update, nothing critical, so I'm not going to worry about it for now. Uh, if we go into the update history, you'll see everything that it did install, and all of this took about half an hour to install for a brand new tablet. So I should be in pretty good shape there. The only other thing I did while I was kind of playing around with this while the updates were going on, I went into the system and power options, and I set it so that essentially when this tablet is plugged in, which I anticipate it always will be since it's going to be connected to this uh, QCT4 software and the Q14, I never want it to turn off. I don't, don't want to go to sleep. I don't want the screen to go away. I want to leave it on all the time. Reason being, I don't want this thing, if this thing's chugging away and quilting at some point and it decides, oh, nobody's typed on the screen for a while, it shuts itself off. I don't want that to happen. Um, I, when I was doing the auto, when I do in the update install, I noted at one point after 10 minutes, which was the default that was set here, all of a sudden the thing powered down. I had to start it back up again. So just to kind of take care of that, I went and changed. You just basically click on the setting. I just set it to never for both uh, screen and sleep. And I believe I'm in pretty good shape. So that should be everything we need to know. I believe this tablet's ready to go. So at this point, I'm going to record the actual installation of the software and we'll see what happens. I'll be back. Hi, Doug again. Just want to do an addendum. We've got Windows set up. We've already gone through the process of setting up the tablet and putting the software on. Just a few other things that we've done kind of above and beyond just so you can kind of see. Um, just a few Windows things that you may find useful. First thing, I, I think I mentioned this in an earlier segment, I'm just gonna show now. Um, we have gone into, you see I clicked on, there's a little symbol there for the internet that normally looks like Wi-Fi. We have actually put the tablet in airplane mode. Um, we did this because we didn't wanna have Windows going in at any point in time, um, doing updates and messing up your quilting because it wants to install a new patch. So we've got an airplane mode. Um, my intent is to keep it in airplane mode most of the time. I don't recommend doing it all the time because you do want to actually get updates from both Windows, from Microsoft, and from the Creative Touch people. I'm assuming that they would they periodically would send patches to the software as well. So it's just a simple toggle. Um, you can just click either Wi-Fi, which is on the left, or airplane mode in the middle, and it will actually put the tablet on the internet or off the internet as the case is. Microsoft typically puts out its patches on the second Tuesday of the month. So you may want to consider any time the second Tuesday of a calendar month has passed, um, take it out of airplane mode, put it the Wi-Fi on just so you can update patches to the, to the, to the, uh, the tablet. So that's the first thing. Another thing we did, again, I just said something that we would have undone. I'm going to go into the cog here, the control panel. Um, we're going to update and security. We also went in on Windows Defender and we did this. I did this off camera just to make it, just to show. We actually went in and turned Windows Defender back on. Uh, you'll see, got the checkbox here. Um, you recall that when we were, when we were actually setting this up, we turned off um, Windows Defender just to make sure it wouldn't interfere with the installation. We have since turned it back on. And forgive me as I try to remember how to do yeah, virus, virus threat and protection settings. We actually went in and turned real-time protection, cloud protection, and automatic sample submission back on. And so we should be good to go there with, with all that. And then one last thing that we did, um, this is just for convenience purposes. Um, this was under, let me back up a screen here. I think we did this, I did this, we did this a little while ago, so bear with me while I'm studying what to do here. Um, we did this under system and it was under power and sleep. There we go. And then we went to additional power settings. 
we went into basically the, there's the power setting that's normally comes on the tablet is the balanced plan. We went and made a few, we made one couple of small tweaks to that. Um, and forgive me, I don't see what I'm looking for yet. Uh, let's see, it was under, choose what the power button does. I'm sorry, that's the second thing from the top here. We set it so that if the tablet is either on battery or plugged in, the default is to put it to sleep. Um, we decided to change that to be shut down. The options are do nothing, sleep, hibernate, and shut down. We put it in shut down mode. We did it for both on battery and plugged in. The reason we did this was because we've got the tablet plugged into the power strip. And when all said and done, you know, we're going to shut this thing off. We're just going to hit the switch on the power strip and turn off the motor plate and turn off the QNIC 4. Um, if all I do, if I don't touch the tablet at all, eventually the battery is just going to run down completely um, if you don't do anything. And we just assume not have that happen. So we just put it in shutdown mode. So basically what we're going to do is I'll just cancel out of all this and get back to the main menu. Clear that out and clear that out. So basically when Janet's all done with the machine, she's just going to go to the tablet, hit the power button. And it's just going to shut itself down. And it'll be all good to go for the next use. So just a little something that's kind of keep in mind. So uh, this is kind of bonus footage. Do it. You don't have to do it, but uh, it just seemed like a good idea to us to do that. So again, I appreciate you watching and happy creative touch quilting. Bye.